Example 57. In order for a container of Sony HD TV sets to be offloaded from a truck for sale at, retail, at a retail store, a random selection of three sets is inspected from the container. If the three sets are defect free, the entire container will be accepted without further inspection. If an individual Sony HD TV has a 0.2% defective rate, what is the probability that a container of Sony HD TV sets will require further inspection? All right, so it's a probability problem, and they're asking us to find the probability that we will require further inspection, right? Require more inspection. You know, Sony doesn't want that, right? They want their truck to be accepted, and they want all the products on the truck, you know, the several hundred TV sets or whatever, to be purchased without problem, right? So they want to test three of them off the truck, have all three be defect free, and then the truck can move on and the company will purchase all the TVs in the truck. However, if they find out that one of the sets or more is damaged or doesn't work properly, the company that's buying the product will ask to select more to test them. If they find maybe another one defective, they might in fact just decline the whole purchase, right? So this is why Sony wants to know, what's the chance that they'll require more inspection because that would put them in a precarious situation? All right, well, if you want to know the answer to this question, um, I want to look for keywords in here that tell me what technique to use. And I do see that I'm selecting three sets to look at. So that's three separate events. So I know I'll be using multiplication somewhere in the problem, but I'm not really sure exactly how to answer this question. So I think I'm going to think about it a little more carefully. What does it take to require more inspection? For example, the first set we looked at, if that was defective, would we require more inspection then? Well, the answer would be yes, right? Because anytime, if they're not all defect free, we're going to have to inspect more sets. So, you know, if the first set is defective, that would cause further inspection. If the second set is, is defective, that would also cause further in inspection. But of course, the first could be good and the second be defective, right? Or they could both be, the first and the second could both be defective, right? The third set could be defective and the first two could be safe or good. So at this point, you know, it seems like a pretty complicated set of ways that this could happen. Anytime that happens, you want to try to word this another way. So what I think is going to be the proper way to say this is to say what? We're dealing with the probability that at least one set is defective. So whenever I look at a problem that's kind of complicated that way, I try to use the phrase at least one to describe the situation. If it fits logically, and it turns out to be logically equivalent to what they asked us to find, then we should use it. That means it's going to be a faster, better way to do the problem. So here it says, probability that we require more inspection. Well, that means it's going to be the probability that at least one set is defective. The probability that at least one set is defective. And I think that's going to be equivalent because, of course, why do we require more inspection if one or more of the sets are defective? All right, great. So since that statement is equivalent to that statement, now we have a blueprint to solve the problem because we know that at least one is equal to one minus the probability that none None are defective in this case. So we put is defective after at least one. So we'll say none are defective, right? That's the equivalent statement. When we're working with this at least one statement, whatever we add to the end of it, we add to the end of the word none, right? So just grammatically, I changed is to are, but otherwise I put the same thing, right? None of the sets are defective. So if we can find this probability, then we can answer the problem. And you'll see that there's no longer kind of ambiguity here. We know exactly how this happens, right? There are three sets selected, so I should have three spaces, right? And then, you know, what do I want this first thing to be? I want this to be the first set that is selected. And how do I want it to turn out? I want it to be not defective, right? And how do I want the second one to turn out? The second set should not be defective, right? And then the third set should not be defective. So I know these probabilities, at least I know what I'm supposed to put there. Now the only question I have to answer is, what's the chance the set is not defective? Well, I know the chance it is defective, right? The probability of a defect is given as, be careful, that's given as a percent. As a decimal, you have to move this over two places, one, two. So you actually, actually get this answer, 0 0.002. 
that's the chance the set is defective. What's the chance that the set is not defective then? Well, you do 1 minus 0 0.002 to find that out, and you will get the answer 0 0.998, or a 99.8% chance that the set is good or not defective. So what's the probability the first set you take is not defective? The answer is 0 0.998. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, gee, when I go to the second set, isn't this a dependent case because I removed one set from the truck and now I'm going back in? If one set has already been looked at, there are going to be less sets in the truck, so I should have to like reduce the fraction type of thing like we did before. Well, there's a little rule, which I think you might have seen in the notes, that said that um, if you're drawing less than 5% of the total population, you don't have to worry about independent versus dependent. So this truck has lots of TVs on it, right? It probably has at least 100 sets on it, and we're only looking at three. So three out of 100 is less than the 5% threshold, which is required for us to um, need to use dependency when it is dependent. So what we can do is we can treat this as if they're independent selections, right? So in other words, pulling one out out of 100 is not going to make a big impact on the probability. So we can just leave it as a 99.8% um, you know, good set ratio in the truck. And we can continue to use this probability over and over again. So in other words, for the second set, the probability that it's not defective will remain 0.998. And likewise, for the third set, the chance that it's not defective is 998. And so that's the chance that all three sets are not defective. And that means our answer for this problem is 1 minus 0.998, right? 1 minus 0.998 to the third power. Let's see what that works out to be as a decimal. When we check the answer, it's going to be 1 minus 0.998 risen to the third power, and we get the answer 0 0.00599. So 0 0.00599. So that's our answer, and that's a very small probability. That's about 0.6 of 1%, right? So it's not even 1%, less than 1% chance. So if I asked, you know, does Sony have to worry about requiring further inspection, given that they have this defect rate for their TVs? I would say no, not really. It's a pretty rare scenario where they would actually have to have three more sets taken from the truck for inspection. It looks like for the most part, they can get away with just three sets being selected because more than 99% of the time, it's gonna be okay. All right, and that's the answer to the question then. So the chance they require more inspection is less than 1%, about 0.599%.